Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion of frontal lobe circuits and talk about the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex. So in terms of location, the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex, which I'm going to refer to as VLPFC, is located on the inferior frontal gyrus in humans. And there's three regions of the VLPFC. The anterior region, which is Brodmann area 47, also known as pars orbitalis. The mid region, which is Brodmann area 45, also known as pars triangularis. And the posterior region, which is Brodmann area 44, also known as pars opercularis. A few landmarks that are important to consider. The motor cortex runs right here, labeled as 4, and it's just posterior to the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex. Additionally, Broca's area is Brodmann area 44 and 45. So it shouldn't come as a surprise when I talk about how the VLPFC is involved with motor functions later on. The VLPFC connects to the thalamus via the well, specifically with the mediodorsal and ventral anterior nuclei of the thalami, the basal ganglia, and the globus pallidus. Needless to say, the VLPFC also connects to other parts of the frontal lobe, such as the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, as well as the orbitofrontal cortex, among other regions in the brain. Okay, so in terms of functions, the VLPFC is typically understood to be involved with motor inhibition and semantic retrieval of information, as well as settling conflicts, working out decisions, and overall planning or inhibition of motor actions. So in terms of the left VLPFC, and I'm going to run with the assumption here that the dominant hemisphere is the left hemisphere, the left pars orbitalis is involved with controlled access to stored conceptual representations. So what this means is when a person is recalling verbal information from their semantic knowledge bank, the VLPFC is involved with what parts of the knowledge bank the brain is going to recall based on the stimuli or stimulus presented. The left pars triangularis is involved with tracking and resolving decision level conflict as well as post-retrieval selection processes. So basically resolving conflict and once information has been retrieved, running through a second time deciding which information to select from the semantic knowledge bank. The left pars apricularis is involved with mouth and motor speech control, so think of your motor homunculus. And again, this shouldn't come as a surprise because 45 and 44, again, are Broca's area and are just anterior to the motor cortex. The right VLPFC, pars orbitalis, is involved with stopping and response override tasks. Basically, motor control. The right pars triangularis is involved with response uncertainty tasks, so deciding what kind of response to take in uncertain situations. The right pars opercularis is involved in stopping tasks as well as updating motor plans. So what can we expect with damage to the VLPFC? Again, before going in depth here, it's important to understand that there are a lot of intricate connections between the frontal lobe circuits as well as other regions of the brain, so none of these lesions correlate one-to-one. -one meaning that if you have a lesion in a specific area of the VLPFC, it's not guaranteed that you're going to see a certain type of cognitive deficit. So in terms of lesions, the most well-known one is in, the is in the dominant hemisphere of the VLPFC, and that's Broca's area. That'll be another video, and I'll talk more in depth about what Broca's aphasia is. Other lesions involve overlap with the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, executive functioning tasks such as stopping tasks, set shifting, and inhibition of information.